Hey, what is up guys? It's Anik and welcome to this week's video. There was not a new video last week of mine. That was because I was on vacation. But that does not mean I didn't do anything. I planned a bunch of new videos for you guys, which will start to roll out from now on. So if you want to stay up to date in terms of post-production processes, live action ideas and tips, or just want to hang out in one of the upcoming vlogs, make sure you subscribe to this channel and turn on the notifications. It does help a lot and I really do appreciate it. Okay, so let's kick things off with a step back. <laughs> I'm talking about the video where I showed you how to set up your own motion graphic templates. In it, I kind of scraped on the automatic size adjustments of shape layers, but looking back, it didn't really pursue a singular goal. And honestly, it was kind of hard to follow. And that's why I decided to put together another video, where I solely show you how to bind a shape layer size to a text or any other layer. So without any further ado, let's hop right in. Roll the intro. So we have this title design already set up. Because if you're watching this video, you probably know how to put something like this together. This will be functioning as our title for now. And at any time we are moving the text, the rest will be following. So repositioning is no issue whatsoever. But the thing is, titles may change over time. So just go in there and type something else. And oh, well, yeah, that kind of sucks. Now we have to dive into the layer settings and adjust the rectangle size in width and height separately until we're satisfied. But actually, I want to go with another typeface. Let's go with uh, railway, yeah. Ah, oh, fuck this. And this will keep going if we don't change anything about it. But luckily we can. So let's check how to automate the size settings of our border layer, depending on the main text. Navigate down until you see the size property of your rectangle and auto option click the stopwatch to enter an expression. We are going to work with two different values, width and height. So set a new variable like w for width, followed by equals, and then just pick with the text layer. After that, type dot source rect at time, which After Effects already suggests to us. You'll also need an opening and closing bracket attached here. And finally, you just have to add whatever thing you want to call up. So in our case, that spec is the width. So simply type dot width and end the line with a semicolon. All this line does is storing the width value of our pick width text layer in pixels inside our set variable of w. So with that stored away, do the same set of actions for the height as well. Copy the whole line, paste into a new one, rename the variable to something like h for height and change the called up spec from width into height. So it's really the same thing only with a different value. Once those variables are set, go into another line in the expression window and put in a squared bracket. All you gotta put into the brackets are the variables w and h separated by a comma and then closing the bracket. When you apply this expression, you can instantly see that the size was set to the outer boundaries of the text layer. So to give the text a little more space, all we gotta do is to add a few pixels to the values. Go into the brackets and after w type plus 120 or something like that. Then go over to the second value and add another 80. Now that looks much better, doesn't it? Now you can change the text, typo and anything else and the box keeps resizing to the right size. There is one little problem though. Say you want to animate the text into the scene instead of having it on constantly. I prepared a very simple animation using text animators. As my next video will be dedicated to text animators, I am not going to dive into it right now. Now you will notice that the box is resizing while the animation is playing. That is because the text animator's animation actually resizes the text layer, not the text itself, but as the letters move individually, the text box covers a larger area until it finally stays in place once the animation is done. So we just have to find a way to tell After Effects at which time we want to reference the text layer size. Thankfully, that is very simple to do. We use the source rect at time function in our expression, remember? As the name already tells you, we can access the values at any given time. 
leaving the brackets blank will always result in a returned value at the moment of replay, meaning at 0 seconds we get the size of the text layer at 0 seconds, at 1 second the size at 1 second and so on and so forth. But that also goes for the frames in between, resulting in a resizing of the box. Now, by adding a number, we control at which point in time After Effects should collect the value from, given in seconds. 0 being at 0 seconds, 1 at 1 second, and I guess you get the point. So, by entering any number but the ones where the animation actually takes place, we only look at the size at that given moment. Well, and there you have it. I hope this was a little bit easier to follow and also clearer as to what I was going for. If you still have any questions, drop them in the comments below and I will get back to you. If you enjoyed this video, smash the like button, subscribe if you aren't already and ring that bell to step by step up your filmmaking and animation game with every video. Thank you guys very much for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Cheers!